Good morning all. Here we have the power board from Unitech Servo Drive. And the problem with this drive is that the IGBT exploded and it went in and smashed the three low side firing channels. The high side firing channels, they survived, but that uh, short circuit energy shot back up through the gates of the IGBT and smashed the three low side firing channels. Now the model number of this servo drive is TVD 6.2-400-25RS and I've repaired the low side firing channels and tested the high side firing channels I've tested the high side firing channels with my meter right here. Everything was good but the low side had blown optocouplers and blown driver ICs. The optocoupler is TLP2200 and the driver IC is IR2121. There were also open resistors and shorted diodes and shorted Zener diodes. This thing was a train wreck. So after the repairs, before we put this drive back together, what we need to do is make sure that all six firing channels are working properly. Over here, I have a variac and a voltage doubler circuit. And we're going to attach that to the DC bus input of this power board. And it's going to come over here. That DC bus is going to come over here and fire up the switch mode power supply that will make the voltages for the logic and the voltages for the firing channels. Uh, up here, we'll get closer so I can show you all this, but up here are two inductors from the power supply uh, that uh, when the power supply is up and running, we'll be able to measure plus or minus 15 volts right here I'm going to clip on this ground with these two resistors right here. They both go to logic ground and power supply, uh, the plus or minus 15 volt ground. So let's get a little bit closer and I'll show you how we're going to hook this all up. And I'm going to gradually increase the DC bus to that power supply input until we see plus or minus 15 volts DC at the uh, 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 at the output of the power supply, we'll look at that with the oscilloscope over there. Now, right now, the meter will be looking across the bus capacitors of our voltage doubler. We don't want to go too high on this circuit right here. We might damage it. <laughs> so we're just going to go to the point where we can see that plus or minus 15 on the oscilloscope when the switch mode power supply starts up. And uh, later on in the day, we can bring the DC bus up to its proper voltage right here. Uh, there's a back plane that this plugs into that has a bridge rectifier and uh, it's 400 volts AC into the uh, bridge rectifier that makes the DC bus. So we'll have maybe close to 500. Well, let me get the calculator out. <laughs> <laughs> we'll do the math here with the calculator. Don't be ashamed of using the calculator. My big brother, he had a slide rule that he used to do when he was in college. Now we got the calculator. <laughs> Our ancestors and, uh, and brothers and whatnot used the slide rules and paper and pencil. Okay, 400 volts times the square root of 2, that's 565 volts DC. So later on, we'll bring this up. The 
DC bus of uh, 500. And, uh, we'll get close, 560 volts DC. We'll have to go real slow so we don't overvolt this board. Just to see if it can handle that uh, DC voltage input. We don't want to put this drive back together if at any point this power board fails. Let's get closer. Here, we're going to clip onto this inductor right here. That's our plus 15 volts DC. The second inductor is our minus 15 volts DC. And you can see they're labeled on the board. This one is minus 15. Over here, you see these two resistors right here? They go to logic ground on this side of the resistor. So we're going to clip our oscilloscope ground to that point right there while we look at the plus 15 and then gradually bring that DC bus voltage up. Now you'll see one, two, three, four, am I counting right? Oh, I started out too early. One, two, three, four, five spade terminals right here. This one closest to the right side is our plus DC bus. The one right beside it is the bus ground. And then these three right here go to the IGBT UVNW. So let's hook everybody up. Here's our oscilloscope ground. Let's bring our oscilloscope over here. And we'll clip plus 15 volts DC to probe channel number one. When the power supply comes up, we'll look at the plus 15. And then we'll move it and look at the minus 15. Put that over just a little bit. Our red wire going to DC bus plus. Our black wire going to bus ground. Let's get close to that oscilloscope and voltmeter while we bring this DC voltage up. All right, turning on the variac. You can see right here at 72.5 volts DC, the switcher's trying to come up. They're starting and stopping. You see that? There we are. There's 203 volts DC on that power supply input. And we have plus 15 volts DC. That looks good and steady. Let's go look at the minus 15. There's the minus 15 volts DC. Good and steady. And that's with the DC voltage in of 204 volts DC. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to enable the six firing channels to fire their outputs and we're going to look at the outputs of the optocouplers we'll look at the inputs of the optocouplers and we'll look at the outputs of the optocouplers and then we'll look at the inputs of the driver ICs and the outputs the outputs fire the gate of the IGBT let me turn this board over and we're going to look at this stake connector right here that connects to the control board. Now right here, this is pin 1, pin 2, pin 3, pin 4, pin 5, pin 6, pin 7, pin 8, and pin 9. Pin 9, when I pull that up to 15 volts DC, the outputs will fire into the gates. The optocoupler and the driver IC will be enabled. Now the gates connect to these white connectors right here. 
and when I pull pin 9 up to pin uh, this uh, 15 volts DC, positive 15 volts DC, we'll be able to see those six firing channels emit their 0 to 15 volt DC square waves. There'll be pulses from ground to 15 volts. Let's get rehooked back up and we'll do that. Place this right here, and we're going to connect this jumper wire to pin nine. One, three, five, seven, nine. Okay, don't fall out. This is our enable jumper wire. Plus bus from the voltage doubler. There's bus ground. Let me double check, make sure I'm hooked up right. Okay, looks good. Turning on the variac. Let's see real quick if we have our plus 15 volts DC. Yes, we do. There's plus 15 volts. Let's see if we have the minus. There's minus 15 volts DC. This is a quad op amp right here. It takes plus or minus 15 volts for that quad operational amplifier. Now, Unhook from there, and I'm going to connect this pick to ground of the oscilloscope, and that's going to allow us to look at the firing signals. Pin 5 of the IR2121 is the output, and right there we have no output. Let's go to the input side of the optocoupler. Okay, that's interesting. Let's go to the output side of the optocoupler. Okay, we're going to get close to the oscilloscope and I'll let you know what I'm uh, probing with the ground and the and the channel one probe. That way you'll be able to see what the waveforms look like. Okay, the first thing I want to look at, I'm on the input side of the optocoupler. And we're going to look at the anode side first. This is pin two. We see a square wave of 0 to 15 volts peak. Now we're going to look at the cathode side. And notice that that is at 15 volts DC. That input LED is not turned on. Okay, now let me pull pin 9 of that state connector up to 15 volts DC. Once again, there is pin 2, the anode side of the input LED. Let's go look at pin 3. This is the cathode side. Look at that. It's being pulled to ground. So that input LED would be conducting if the anode is at plus 15 and the cathode is at ground. So, with pin 9 disabled, not connected to plus 15 volts DC, the cathode is high. 
and when pin 9 is pulled up to 15 volts DC, the cathode goes to ground. And the output would be enabled. The output would be turned on and off. Now, let me disconnect the oscilloscope ground from logic ground, the input side of the optocoupler. We'll go look at the output side of the optocoupler. Alright, don't get across that DC bus, Pete. <laughs> I'll try not to. Okay, there pin 5 of the output side optocoupler. That's ground. Let's see. Not sure who the... Let me let me get my print over here of that optocoupler. Let me see who the output is. Okay, the output is pin 7 and pin 5 is the ground side of the output. Okay. So here with pin 9 not pulled up to 15 volts DC. There's the output, pin 7 of the optocoupler. You notice that it is not turned on. There's no output. So let me pull pin 9 of that stake connector up to 15 volts DC. Alright, here's ground on pin 5, channel 1. Oh, I slipped off. Hard to get on these pins. There, look at that. We have an output of that optocoupler. That's driving into the input of the IR2121 driver IC. Okay, let me disable pin 9 again. We know what the input to the IR2121 is because that's the same as the output of the optocoupler. We're going to go look at the output of the driver IC, the IR2121 now. And we'll see what we get there. Pin 5 is the output side, VS, of the IR2121. And 7 is the output. So first, let's go look at it disabled. Okay, we're on pin 5 with ground of the oscilloscope. Here's pin 7. No output. Now let's pull pin 9 up to plus 15 volts DC and we'll look at the same pins. Pin 5 ground. Pin 7 output, look at that. There's our gate firing waveform. You can see it goes a little bit negative, doesn't it? Let me move the trigger point negative and we'll see what we get down there. Okay, going on back on. That looks like it could be going to negative 10. Definitely negative 5. Oh, yes, negative 10 volts DC. Spread that out a little bit. We can get a wider waveform. on it it's just yeah yeah definitely that's a negative 10 volts it's going negative by 10 volts so it's about positive 15 to negative 10 now that's one fire channel let's go to the second one we should have the same thing this is the second fire channel Let's go to the third firing channel.
it looks the same I need to extend out my probe ground can't reach the the other three firing channels okay there we have a longer ground probe don't let that touch that DC bus <laughs> stay away from that 200 volts Okay, here's the fourth firing channel. That's the output of the IR2121. That looks good. Here is the fifth. Oh, get on it. I'm trying not to short everything out. It's hard to get into these pins. There's the fifth firing channel. And that looks good. They should all look the same. Now here's the sixth. Firing channel. Everybody is firing good. We could take this firing board and reassemble that servo drive with the new IGBT. We are good. We... Okay, let me power down. We'll put this drive back together. Good job, folks. You fixed another one. Resurrected another one from the dead. <laughs> Don't you love doing this kind of work? It is fascinating work. I hope you all get into it. Turn my scope off. We'll save a little bit of power. Let's take a look at the bad IGVT. Set our meter to diode test mode. And the part number of this IGVT power module is SKM50. GD125D. This terminal right here is the P terminal. That's our bus plus terminal. This is the N terminal. Bus ground. Here is U, V, and W. So let's put our black lead on the P terminal. Our red lead on the U-terminal. We have a diode voltage drop of 0.373. Red lead on V. Point, oh, get on there. 0.374. Black lead still on the P-terminal. Red lead on W. 0.374. 5. So far so good. Now let's put our black lead on the P terminal and our red lead on the N terminal. From bus plus to bus ground, 0.374 volt diode drop. Now let's leave our red lead on the N terminal, black lead on U, 0.369. Here's V with the black lead, 0.372. And here is W. There's our short circuit. <laughs> okay, black lead on W, red lead on N. That's our short circuit. Now let's go, we'll check the gate emitter circuitry. Okay, on the low side, W, pins 11 and 12, that's these two right here, that is, 11 is the gate and 12 is the emitter. 
let's put our red lead on the W terminal and here is terminal 11 here is terminal 12 they appear to be not shorted let's go to the end not shorted let's check the other one I'll look at that okay this is our low side emitters that is good but 12 was open must have opened up during the flame out Yep, 12 is open to bust ground. This is the V emitter. That's good. Should connect to uh, the end terminal. Here's the U emitter. That's good. It should connect to the end terminal. But when the W leg flamed out, it opened up these terminals right here. Move that out of the way. Now we'll remove the bad IGBT, install the new IGBT, and put this drive back together. Alright, we'll remove the bad IGBT. Install the new one. applied a coating of heat sink grease to the bottom of the new IGBT. to do is add some wiring to the U, V, and W terminals. Get my wire strippers. Tin those wires. Have a little bit of flux.
There we go. Now, these wires will connect UVNW to the power board. The shortest wire goes to W. Let's go ahead and add that. We'll do that one first. There's W. Let's see who the longest wire is. Okay, let's set that long wire to the side. The middle longest wire goes to V. Longest wire goes to you. There we go. Okay. Now the middle wire and the longest wire go through the current sense modules. Let's bring these wires up. Let's see how I want to route this. Go this way. Yeah, I think that'll be okay. Kind of flatten them out there. Let's bring these wires up. Now we'll install this board. This is the bus capacitor board, and there's also circuitry here for the gate emitter firing circuitry of the IGBT. And here is our red and black lead for bus plus and bus ground, and here are the bus capacitors. And this sits on top of the IGBT. And there's also, you see these white connectors right here? They connect to the white connectors on the power board. Let's get that flattened all the way down. Make sure we're not crimping the thermal wires. Okay, everybody looks good. Now we're going to solder. This board to the IGBT. I had already checked all the devices on this board good. The diodes and resistors, they all tested good.
it's amazing how they survived when the firing channels on the power board were damaged. But sometimes that happens. Good length of solder here. That's P and N terminals are going to take a little bit of solder. P terminal. There's the end terminal. Okay. One more thing to do before we're done with this board. We have to solder these wires to these little squares right here. Let's get this one first. Pretend that wire. It's wire to that square. Okay, let's. There, oh, <laughs> come on, done. I didn't let the solder. <laughs> didn't let the solder. Cool. Okay, there's one. There's the second wire. One more, and we'll be done with this board. Trim that one back a little bit. Okay. 
There we go. There we go. Now, the hard part is done. <laughs> that is the hardest part. Putting that board on top of that IGBT. Next is the is the power board, and then on top of that the control board. And this drive will be fully reassembled. Here are the stake connectors that mate this IGBT board, bus capacitor board to the firing channel circuitry on the power board. Let's install these first. Let me get a picture of that. Now for a tricky part, we have to line those stake connectors up with the connectors here in the firing channels. And it's a uh, it's a little bit difficult. <laughs> All right. Let's see. What do we have to do first? We have to hook up these wires before we line all this up. Okay. to do. Longest one goes through here. The next longest one goes through second current sense module. If I can get untangled here. Okay, this one plugs in here. Let's go through here. Is that correct? Should that be right? Let me let me reroute these guys. This through here. Okay, let's hook the second one up. It's the V terminal. Let's hook the W terminal. Or is that U? Okay, that's the U terminal. Now let's hook the W terminal. bus ground and let's connect 
plus plus. Okay, I'm gonna get some wire ties and tie these up. I'll be right back. still Okay, I get a picture of that. This drives a puzzle. <laughs> now for the hard part. Well, one of the hard parts. <laughs> Getting all of this lined up with these connectors right here. And what I do is I'll fold the board over just like this and then I'll turn this up now let me get on to the other side there I can see better from this side I'll turn it up like this and hold it against my chest while I look down inside to see that I'm lining everybody up so I'm going to straighten this guy out a little Kind of bent over. Okay, that's good. That's good. You're not going to be able to see what I'm doing, but you'll get the idea. Lay the heat sink against your chest. And look down inside where you're getting everybody lined up. Straighten out this middle one. Makes you wonder how they do this at the factory. <laughs> Done thousands of these things, and it's really simple for them. Okay, come on. Okay, there's one. There's two, three. I think I've got that one, or is that out? Get a flashlight. Side. Let's get the front side. Come on, get in there. Okay, I think I got it. Now to ensure that I got it, you can see that the ends of the stake connectors poke up through the holes of the white connectors on this side of the board. You can look see 
hope you have good connection. Okay, this one, this one's not connected. This one's pretty shallow. Let's look, see what's going on here. Okay, I'm not in on this one. Go back and back out. Now we're gonna start over. Don't worry, we'll get it. I got five. Got five in. Six one over here didn't want to go. It's kind of cockeyed and it slid up the outside of the white connector on the power board. All right, let's try it again. Okay, here we go again. Come on now. Help me out. One. There's two. There's three. There's four. So close. Come on now. I think I got it. Okay, let's look and see. Oh, not again. Come on, you were in. Okay, you are in. Okay, yeah, I see him. Just gonna push up. Gotta push up on these, these. up in here push these pins up if I can without breaking them add some extra magnification to my glasses Hmm. I ain't got no light down in there. I gotta get my headlight on. Alright, we're getting there. Push up for some reason. Okay, let me take it off. I gotta extend these out a little bit. Take it 
Take three, or was that four? They're pretty tight. I'm gonna see if I can center. I'll be right back. Okay, let's try these ones. Here we go again. Okay, there's the back side. This is going to be a little difficult. Yeah, we did that. Okay. Ah, the side. Yeah, I didn't go in. This get really aggravating. Come on. Okay, did we get it that time? No. All right, we're gonna have to take a break here in a little bit because I'm getting really aggravated. You know, this always goes fairly well until you turn the camera on. Okay. All right, come on. One, maybe one. Okay, they're all poking through. <laughs> Turn that light off. Whew, I better bolt that down before before they come undone. <laughs> oh, whew, that was, I was about to give up. About the time I wanted to give up, I got it. <laughs> whew. Almost there.
that. Here's the control board. Now, this stake connector right here on the control board mates to this, this uh, connector here, stake connector on the firing board. Let me look, make sure that everybody is still poking through. I'd like to push these ones down a little bit to ensure that they're mated to the bottom side. Okay, that's good. Let's push these down a little bit. That's good. Alright, I like that. Let's go ahead and connect the control board to the firing board. There we go. Now we'll put the front plate on and that will help hold everything together. through that standoff. Let's put this one through that standoff. Let's see what do you need to do now? Okay. Some longer screws. Hold 
don't know if those will work. This will. Get in there. Fingers are too big. My tools are too big. Come on. Yeah, we ain't got. 
got all day now. Come on. This screw is about to get left out. <laughs> it is so close to being left out. Come on. Come on. There it goes. Okay. That's it. We're all back together. Yeah, we're safe testing. We'll save testing this unit for tomorrow. It's been a long day already. <laughs> there she is. All back together. Shoo, that was a chore, wasn't it? Did y'all enjoy that? I hope so. It's a lot of fun working on things like this. Although it does get aggravating. It's a lot of satisfaction in being aggravated every now and then. Okay, y'all. Have a good rest of your Sunday. We'll try it again tomorrow. We'll try it again tomorrow. Let's get some pictures. Enjoy the time with your families. Families are hard to come by. When you got a good family. Spend a little bit of time with them. You'll enjoy it, and they'll enjoy it. We'll see you in the next one.